All right, good morning, everybody. It's Friday, March 19th, and we're about to start another work day. It is 8 a.m., so we're getting an early morning start today instead of a late afternoon start or a mid-afternoon start. We're going to run out to Sunbury, do two of those again, and then uh, finish up with one down to Foglesville. Uh, going to be a nice sunny day. Uh, cold, only about 40, 42 degrees, and quite windy. Uh, we had a rainstorm yesterday, and now it's cold today. But then it's going to get mild again. Next week should be in the 50s and 60s. So. so we are on our way and uh, the best way to go to get over there is to go up through Tamaqua and across 54 hometown and get on Interstate 81 southbound and go down to the uh, Tremont ex exit where Big Lots is and uh, go in that way otherwise if you take 209 over through Pottsville and Cressona you end up in a mile long traffic jam at the Cressona light and, and the streets are narrow in there and there's it's just a mess. So this way you kind of keep rolling. It, it sounds awkward. I mean, the other way you can think of going is out to Hamburg and jump on 78, but 78's under construction and that can get to be a mess depending on what they're doing. So this is the best way to go. Plus we can go up here and we can top off with fuel. All right, fixing to get on 81 southbound here at 54 at the top of the hill, uh, Mile Hill or Vulcan Hill. Go down the other side, drops us into Monoy City. And we just got through here in time because there's an oversized load coming down that ramp going to be going down the way we just came up, which uh, would have made for an interesting situation because he's about a truck and a half wide. So uh, we just managed to make it. So we got a few miles of running southbound on 81 until we get off and... and head back onto the two lane roads to where we pick up our first load and our second load. Um, the one thing went home in the water like we do is it's uh, a lot of two lane road running. Um, I'd like more interstate running, but it is what it is. Um, that was the nice thing about hauling freight. I used to go up to Albany and Springfield and down to South Jersey, Philly, Baltimore, so forth. They got a lot more interstate running. so. Uh, we don't have that, but the two lane roads make for some interesting video work too, so. All right, once again, we are loaded and we are getting ready to roll. And you gotta come up this alley like I showed you in the last one. And uh, sneak our way out of here. And it's kinda, I'm glad I got this map. It's easier to uh, feather the throttle. Let's see, any, whoa, big truck coming. Couldn't see him because of parked cars. Uh, it's tight. You can't really see too well coming out of here either. Besides the fact that you got missed that this telephone pole. And if I can zoom in on my spot there, you missed that other telephone pole with the trailer. So yeah, it's rather tight and the visibility isn't the greatest. So you gotta stick your nose out over the white line a little bit to see. Thank goodness Walmart here wasn't coming. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's about an hour ride. 38 miles, I looked at it on Google Maps. It's 38 miles, but it's an hour to get there because of the uh, weight of the load, the hills, the terrain, and the fact that this is not the fastest truck on the hills. The Peterbilt was a faster truck. Um, but it had its little quirks. Um, it was all or nothing on the throttle with that truck, where this one you can feather it a little bit. It has a creep mode, where if you touch the pedal, it will creep either in first gear forward or in reverse backwards. Uh, with that truck, as soon as you took your foot off the throttle, it defaulted immediately into neutral. And if you were like trying to back up over the hump down where we unload, in Fogelsville, it would stop you dead in your tracks instead of walking you up and over it. So it was, each truck has its own little uh, quirkiness about it. This one's slow on the hills. That one was more difficult to finesse into parking spots. So, 
You know, some of these hills don't look like much, but they eat me up a little bit. I'm doing 35 mile an hour climbing this one right now, so we're not doing that great. And we're probably gonna about hold this the rest of the way up here. The speed limit's 40, so we're not too far underneath it, but the truck just doesn't have hill power. Um, it runs good, there's nothing wrong with the truck. The truck runs great, but it just doesn't have a lot of hill power. And I am about to sneeze, I think. <laughs> um, well, when we drop down off this grade here, we'll be coming into a little town called Mandata, I think, or Mandata. I don't exactly know how it's pronounced. But that's where we'll meet up with 147 for the rest of the way up in the Sunbury. Uh, another little small town along the way. Um, doesn't look too prosperous, but I don't think that's the idea out here. I think it's just that people like to live away from the city and more in the country and in the woods. And once we get through this little town here, we'll be at 147. In a little bit of a, a weird intersection. And you can see the sign, Village of Mandata. I, I would imagine it's called Mandata. Mandata does, doesn't sound right. And again, the homes are close to the road here, as you can see. So they indicate it's a Y intersection. It, it is, but it isn't. You kind of go straight where that truck is making left up there. And that's how you get to, to 147. You can see we're two miles from Herndon, which I showed you in the other video. And the brakes are starting to squeak a little bit. Is he coming? Yeah, there's one coming, but which way is he going? Turn in that way. Okay. At least the traffic isn't bad out here. It's not too hard getting out onto these uh, different roads. Three oh five for whoa! Interesting move there, UPS. So we are unloading the first one, and this is a little bit awkward, but I'm using my phone again to talk to you guys. Uh, we got up here right at about 11 o'clock, so about 11.20 to 11.30, we should be out of here rolling back for our second one. We'll get that one back here probably about 2-ish, get that one delivered, and then roll on for our Hazelton. All right, so we are here loading the second one up uh, to take to deliver and after that we'll head to Hazleton and we'll take the third one and that'll go down to Fogelsville but we're up here loading the second one we're about 3,000 gallons into it it's a 6,200 gallon tank so we're halfway there takes about a half hour to load it um, a little bit slower loading facility than some of the others but uh, that's okay because it's an easier one to work with uh, I'll take ease over speed any day but Beautiful day out, look over my shoulder, beautiful sunshine, uh, beautiful blue skies, just a little on the cold side yet, still feels like winter, doesn't feel like spring, wind's got a bit of a bite to it, it's only about 38, 40 degrees, so uh, not quite there yet, but we will be eventually, <laughs> and then uh, some of us, not me, will complain that it's too hot and they can't wait for fall, so um, a lot of us human beings aren't satisfied with whatever we get. May through August, the hotter the better. If it's 90 degrees every day during those four months, I'll take it. Never complain a bit. All right, second load is delivered. Now we run along the river here and along the river flood wall in Sunbury. We get ourselves over to Northumberland and we'll run uh, US 11 over to Danville, up 54, get on 80 and head toward Hazleton. So, 
Uh, most of the day is done. Still got a few hours left to go, of course, but the heavy work is over, more or less. But yeah, that concrete wall to our left there, that's a flood wall. Um, if it weren't there, this town would flood every time the Susquehanna comes up. But uh, they put that flood wall in, and it, it, other than a historic, biblical type flooding event, this town won't really flood anymore because of that concrete wall. But when we get up out of town, I'm going to show you something else that's really unique. So if you see ahead of us there, there's a steel arch railroad uh, trestle, and on the other side of that is the highway bridge. And we're going to go under this railroad trestle, and then we're going to make a left go across that highway bridge, and we're going to cross the Susquehanna River. However, I think we're going to get this light red. I don't I think we're going to get stuck here for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, there's an arrow. Maybe it turns green, but I don't think so. I think it stays red. I don't know how long we're going to sit here, so I guess I'm just going to have to uh, talk to you guys a little bit. Well, you can see the Susquehanna out there ahead of us a little bit. Uh, Shikalemi State Park Marina. Um, State Park Overlook. Shikalemi was a Native American Indian. I don't know if he was a chief or what, but pretty prominent in this area. There we go. It's turning yellow now, so we should be able to get across and yeah and no cars even here so we don't have to worry about taking it so tight so we crossed the river but in reality we're only crossing half the river this is only half of the susquehanna river When we get back on dry land over here, this is an island in the middle of a river. And it's a big enough island and a permanent island that there are uh, homes and industries built on it. You see the homes on the left and right, uh, some nice half doubles and a few singles. And up the line a little bit there to the right, there's uh, a couple of city streets in there and uh, homes and neighborhoods. And we come up on this bridge and we cross the other half of the Susquehanna River. So that's how big the river is, that there's an actual permanent island there that they built homes on and it's a little community. Um, so now once we get over here, we're in Northumberland, Pennsylvania. So we gotta make a light at this right, and that's US 11, that'll take us to Danville and put us up on Interstate 80 and take us back to Hazleton. And I don't know why traffic is backed up unless there's a school bus up there somewhere letting kids off. It is uh, 3.22 p.m., so there might very well be a school bus. But well, we came out of Sunbury, and now we're in Northumberland, all in central Pennsylvania along the Susquehanna. All right. Loaded this third one up here in Hazleton, and we are ready to roll. Or should I say bounce? Um, this road hasn't been graded yet. It's still full of ruts from the winter. So we gotta take it slow and we don't break anything. Uh, another truck just came up and uh, he's gonna load. So we'll probably catch him down at the plant. Um, we may or may not be finished before he gets there, depending on how it's running down there. Nice thing about Sunbury is when you get out there, you immediately get, uh, immediately get loaded once the tech comes out and uh, does what he needs to do. There's no waiting like there is sometimes at uh, the other place we go to. So, so it's a little bit better in that respect, but it is what it is. It's a job and then you take what comes. If you have to wait for uh, your turn to 
unload and you have to wait for your turn to unload. It's no big deal. Um, as long as it doesn't get excessive. <laughs> but it is nice to be able to back in there, make a phone call, and they come out within about five minutes and do what they need to do, and you're unloading. That's out at Sunbury. So, it is 4.42. Last time we talked to you, it was 3.22 when we were coming out of Northumberland. So it took us a while to get over here. And uh, it's going to take us about an hour or so to get down to Foglesville. Hopefully we can get this unloaded right away and uh, get done. I thought we'd be done by 6 o'clock tonight, but I have a feeling it's going to be closer to 7 o'clock. So, almost a 12-hour day. I have to look back at how Tuesday played out because I did this same thing on Tuesday and see if I did it in uh, 10, 11, or 12 hours. just seemed like it took longer today for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe because it took longer to fuel. Instead of getting right on a pump, I had to wait for one to clear because there were other guys there fueling when I got there. So, All right, so we are down here in Fogelsville and we are unloading... And uh, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, it's going to be a solid 11-hour day. And that's what it was on Tuesday when I did the three loads. The two out to Sunbury and the one down here. Uh, I didn't realize it just seemed like it took longer today than yesterday for some reason. I don't know why. But uh, anyway, instead of waiting until we get up to the shop to do this. And then maybe the mechanics are there or something. We'll just do it right here. and Finish it up. We're unloading. Uh, as soon as the other guy left, light came on, so we were able to start pumping right away. So we should be out of here in about 15, 20 minutes, and it's 6.10, so about 7 o'clock we'll be done. So 8 o'clock this morning was the start time, and 7 will be the finish time. So, all right, y'all have a good weekend, and we're going to work on this this weekend and try and get it on the tube as soon as we can.